today we'll be learning how to work with ceramics and create a lighthouse, or at least part one of how to create a lighthouse. For this lesson, you're going to need some clay. Here's my ceramic clay I've been keeping soft. Some clay mixed with water, also called slip. A toothbrush or a fork, something in order to attach the clay. I'll be showing you that later. Some clay tools, a rolling pin, a base to put our clay on so that we can store it in between steps, and some kind of a, um, I, I created an aluminum mound in order to build our clay on. Okay, so when you first get clay, you are going to have to wedge the clay, so I'll be showing you how to do that. You're also going to create a paper model so that we can use it as a pattern for our clay. So I'll show you some of the different parts that I created for my model, because I kind of, you want to kind of put it together and make sure everything fits and, and is the size that you want, and we'll adjust it as we're working in clay. So here we have a rectangle for a roof. We created a little house shape. This is just four equal squares with two equal triangles on the two middle pieces. And then for the roof, I had to measure the side for the width and make it a little bit bigger. And I had to measure these angles to put it over. I created another little add-on house. You don't need all four walls if it's going to be attached. You only need three. So the triangles in the middle and the two sides. A little roof for that. Here we have our tower for our lighthouse. Which is just a rectangle. We want to make sure that we measure it. We figure out how tall we want it to be. And then we make sure it's long enough that it can wrap around and it's not going to be like way too skinny or way too wide to look like a lighthouse tower. And the roof, which is simply a circle with a little wedge cut out. There's another circle so that we can have something in between our tower and the part of our lighthouse where we're going to cut our holes for our lantern to be. Another rectangle for that, another circle, okay? So these are our pattern pieces. Now the first thing you do when you receive your clay is you need to do what we call wedge the clay. Wedging the clay is a method that ceramic artists use to get the air bubbles out of the clay and to make sure that our clay is uniform. That means it's all the same um, consistency. There's no wet areas. So all kind of pretty much the same, okay? I'll keep this, I need to store it for later. Okay, so when you wedge the clay, first thing you do is you're gonna put your clay in a mound like this all together. And then when you're gonna push the clay using the palms of your hands at an angle, okay? So I'm pushing down and lifting up. And you can see my hands, I'm starting here and I go over at an angle. When you do this, this, like I said, works out the air bubbles and makes a nice uniform clay that we'll be able to roll out and use for our different methods of construction. Notice I'm using a piece of canvas to do this on so it doesn't stick to my tray. I'm also using a tray so I can kind of keep my mess contained. Clay has a way of getting everywhere when it dries. It gets to be this little powder that it's not necessarily good to breathe in if you have a lot of it everywhere, so you want to make sure that you use a wet sponge to clean up after you're done using clay. Clay does wash off very easily using just water and some detergent if it gets on your clothing. So I'm going to push down and wedge the clay 30 times. 30 times is the number I use because it's just enough to make sure that there's no air bubbles left in my clay. 
And the more that I wedge, if I wedge for too long, then I create a clay that gets drier and drier. The more I'm doing this, the more it's drying just a little bit. And we don't want our clay to be too wet and sticky, like this clay. It's like too much water. It's all mushy, it's on my fingers. Okay, so you want your clay to be a good consistency that you can roll out, you can mold and model, and you can attach pieces. But you don't want it to be too dry because then it's just gonna crack. Now, after I've done this, I'm gonna form my land. So I'm gonna take maybe half of this. Put the other half to the side. And I'm gonna use a rolling pin. Now, I start by first pushing down my clay a little bit. And then rolling out my clay so that it's a quarter of an inch thick and it's even. Sometimes what I've done is I put pieces of quarter inch wood on either side to make sure it's even, but I don't have those with me now. And I'm really, I've been doing this for so long that I'm really good judge normally. If you make your clay too thick, um, then you're gonna be wasting a lot of clay. It's gonna be a little more difficult to work with. If you make it too thin, that's worse. It's better to be a little bit too thick than too thin. Too thin will dry out crack easily and is very difficult to work with. So I've kind of rolled out enough clay to be my land form. And if I want to test it, I can use my clay tool. This is a clay tool that's a hardwood tool on one side and a loop wire tool on the other. This will be perfect for forming our windows and for cutting our clay. So to test it, make sure that it's a quarter of an inch. I cut a little piece off and I just look at the thickness. That's about a quarter of an inch. You don't need a perfect measurement. Now I'm gonna take my form. Um, you could put plastic over this if you want, if you're worried about it sticking. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. And you just make sure that it's gonna cover your entire form. Now remember, we are using this piece of, this is a bunch of cardboard put together. Normally I'd use what's called masonite or wood. Um, it's a little sturdier, it's not gonna get wet, but I didn't have any, so. This is what happens when you're working from home. So I'm gonna put my base here. I'm gonna put my clay on top of it. And I wanna make sure, I think I want a little bit of a beach. You can notice this one has a nice beach feature here, some water. This one also, I put a little dock and a beach. You don't have to, but um, lighthouses are typically on the water. So you can have some water there with a little beach or you could have just rocks. And just assume, we can just imagine the water on the other sides. So I'm gonna kind of form my landform. I want it a little organic. That means it's not too geometric. It's not a perfect circle or a perfect oval. It's definitely not a square. I have my landform done. Now this, I can put to the side. This leftover clay, I'm going to put in a nice ball because these little pieces will dry out a lot faster. And then I'm gonna put it in some plastic right away. Now I take my other pre-wedged clay. I'm just gonna kind of press it down a little bit. And once again, I'm gonna be rolling this out to start forming my houses. So this is the fun part. I'm gonna show you how to cut out and how to attach your different parts of your lighthouse. Again, you are rolling out your clay to a quarter of an inch. Don't worry about the texture. We can smooth that out later. And we'll put this to the side. Test off a little piece. This piece feels a little bit thinner. Yeah, that's a little thin. Where's this side? Well, they're both a little bit thin, but I think it's okay for our little houses. It'll be fine. Now, you're gonna take your pieces and you wanna to try to fit as many pieces onto this piece of clay as possible because every time you have to take your pieces of clay and put them back together and roll them back out, your clay dries out a little bit. So I'm gonna to try to fit as many pieces as I can to get my basic structures up. 
because if I just roll this out and then I cut this in the middle and then I have to re-wedge my clay each time it's drying out a little bit. There. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut around my pieces using my loop wire tool. Again, saving my pieces because I do need to re-roll them out. So, to attach our clay, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be forming this into a cylinder. Take these pieces to the side. We'll bring our mound right here. And then attaching it to our clay right here. For this, I am using my slip, which is this mix of water. I'm gonna use a toothbrush that's from the dollar store that has some hard bristles. Um, many times when I used clay, I used a fork. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's called score and slip. So what you do is you score with a fork, or in this case, I'm trying it with a toothbrush. You score it so that it fits like a puzzle piece. You wanna texture it up, get some texture in there and then add your slip just a little bit. You don't need to drench it and attach. And hopefully that'll make the clay bind together and hold together. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I'm pushing it together and I'm using my fingers to smooth it out. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna make the clay too skinny or pinch it with your fingers. I'm going on the surface of the clay. I'm not pinching it or squeezing it together. Then I'm gonna add it to my landform here. Again, I'm gonna figure out where I want it to go. So sometimes I might just kinda of very lightly kinda of mark off where I want it, just kinda of use the toothbrush and a little bit of slip to create a nice texture, which is going to uh, score the clay so that it sticks on better. You don't want so much slip that it's gonna make your clay mushy. It's not really, it kinda acts as a clay glue, but you don't want it to be making your clay too wet. Then you're going to attach your clay. This is a great time to use the hardwood tool because it's a flat edge. And let me try to do this so that you can see. And you can use the edge, right on the edge. You don't wanna push into the clay too much, but you just kinda of wanna make sure that it's attached. Put the roof together. Again, I'm going to score and slip. So this little triangle, this Pac-Man part, score it a little tiny bit of slip. Notice I'm not drenching my work with the slip. And then I push the clay in. Okay, this piece is not gonna be attached to anything just yet because I have some more that I have to cut out. So I'm gonna put it on my clay and leave it be for now. This is the more difficult part. What we want is we wanna be creating a house that's not a circle. We don't want it to look like this because that has no form, right? We wanna create these nice angles in my clay. And they're gonna go, just to show you, you don't have to draw the lines, but they're one right here, one right here, and one right there. So what you do, when you fold your clay, you're very gentle, and you're just folding, you see how it's a very soft fold right now? Using two fingers, very lightly just pinch the clay. Then go to your next angle, next corner of your house, and very gently, again, just pinch the clay. This way, very gently pinch the clay. And then we want our house to be a little bit more squared. So 
I mean, I can cut a little tiny bit off, I guess. If you're having trouble, you can cut these pieces off and you can score and slip each side on if you are having trouble bending it and it's not coming out the way you want. Okay. I'm not loving the texture of the toothbrush. I think I'm gonna get a fork. So what I'm doing is I'm just, I don't love the scoring and slipping with the toothbrush. So I'm using this tool. You can also use a fork to scrape it and I'll show you that in the next video. Just you wanna really create some texture so it sticks on well. Then take your hardwood tool Move it on to the surface. Just move this out of the way for now. You can kind of see what I'm doing. Tilt it up a little bit. Smooth that on. And I even do it on the inside to really make sure that it's not gonna come off. Make sure everything's stuck on. And you can use the stick also to kind of make sure it's all straight. It goes straight up, it's not a wobbly little house, it's gonna fall down. And again, I'm gonna score it. And I'm gonna attach my roof. Before I do that, because I'm gonna be closing off my whole house, I'm gonna add windows in the sides of my building. Can you see the window there? And I'm using this tool. This is my favorite part of this project, actually, doing this. What I do is I hold this so that it is perpendicular to the side of the wall my building. I gently put it in without poking a hole through the building, pull down, and pull this out. If we don't cut holes in our building, what we're essentially doing is creating giant air bubbles that are going to um, explode. It's a very dramatic word. It's going to basically shatter my clay in the kiln. So I think on this side, I'll add, oh, a circular window just to show you what that looks like. I put my clay, now I put my hand behind it, put my clay tool inside, and I twist, and then I pull it out. So you can see the circle. So all I did is I put it in, twisted it around, and pulled it out. And then maybe another little hidden door back here. Again, putting your hand inside so the wall doesn't cave in, pulling down and pulling out. Make sure that's all out. Okay. Um, finally, after I have some holes in my house, I'm going to add the roof. So basically I'm gonna fold it so that, just to show you where the fold is gonna be right there, I'm gonna just gently Fold it like this, just very gently using my fingers to bring that to a nice sharper angle. Make sure that fits. It does. I'm gonna score around the edges here. I guess I'll still use my toothbrush for just a little tiny bit of slip. And attach my roof. Okay, so my 
construction is more than halfway done. You can neaten it up using your hardwood tool. Make sure that everything's attached. And um, part one is complete. I'll be back with part two.